Bhagavatam, the Navavida Bhakti Margas have been mentioned. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnosmaranam, Archanam, Vandanam, Padasevanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. There is no specific hierarchy to this devotion, but in my own way I feel that ultimate goal of devotion is Atmanivedanam only, where you surrender to the divine and you become one with the divine. There is no two anymore. So devotion that leads us to that ability to surrender, it's true devotion. And today as we celebrate Onam to all our Malayali devotees, Onam Ashamsagar, they are all lined up there to get some special blessings on Onam. But more than anything else, why Onam is a festival that should be celebrated not just in Kerala but everywhere is because it brings this idea of surrender as the highest form of devotion. You know the story, but I only want to highlight the essence of that story. When Bali Chakravarti was ruling all the three worlds and somewhere he also had developed the arrogance of being the most mighty and powerful. At the same time, he was a great devotee of Vishnu and also a great Dani, giver of things. If anybody would come and ask him anything, he would give away generously. But he was also a daitya, a demon by birth. So there were some demonic qualities also in that. And that was the cause why devatas were not happy with him ruling the three worlds. And so they went and prayed to Mahavishnu and said, please do something about it because nobody can defeat him, he's invincible. Only you can do something. And so Mahavishnu takes avatar as Vaman avatar as we know. And when Bali Chakravarti is doing a huge yagna, Vishwajit yagna, to strengthen his position even further in the universe, that's when they give charity, lot of donations. And this Vamana avatar comes over there and begs him for three steps of property. And uh, naturally, Bali Chakravarti feels it's too less of an ask. So he says, no, ask something more. Uh, he even promises him a part of his kingdom, saying, take that and you live there and do whatever you want. He says, no, I'm not asking, I'm not tempted by all this. Just give me three steps of, which I will measure with my own feet. Just give me that much land and I'll be very happy. And Bali Chakravarti says, done. It will be given and in those days, they would use a water pot to pour some water from your hand to the hand of the receiver. And that was the agreement or that was the registration or whatever you call it, unlike these days. And one kept one's word. That was the most important thing. And whatever was considered as a method or a sacred ritual to commit to one another person. Like even when in wedding we do kanya dana, we pour water. Like this, in every ritual we were pouring water. So dhanam, water is essential. So as he was pouring, his guru was there. His name was Shukracharya. He was a daitya guru. He figured this out that this Vamana is not an ordinary person. He is Mahavishnu himself. And he has come to take everything away from Bali. He won't leave him with anything. And three steps and all is just a drama, but actually he's going to take away all the three worlds from Bali. That is, the, that is the reason he has come. So he stops Bali, says, don't give this charity, don't do dana to this man. Bali says, I've already committed. I shall give. But why do you say so? He says, this is Mahavishnu. This is not Vamana. He's a cheat. And he's going to take away everything that you own. And then Bali Chakravarti, what he says is very beautiful. He says, is it so? Is it Mahavishnu himself who has come to beg for arms from me? What a fortune, what a fortune. He could have as well torn open my stomach like that of my great-grandfather and taken away everything that we have. In fact, what we have, it is actually his. Because he defeated, he killed Hiranyakashipu, my great-grandfather, and gave the kingdom to my grandfather, Pahlada. And that is the kingdom I have continued to rule and continued to expand. So it's all is his in the first place. Yet look at his humility to come and beg from me what already is his. Should I refuse, should I be a fool to refuse this fortune? He can as well kill me and take away whatever he wants. It is his compassion and his kindness that is giving me an opportunity to be known as a great giver. So he is coming and begging from me. He said, even if he takes away everything, I am ready to give because it is his in the first place. See the beauty of uh, Bali Chakravarti's devotion to Mahavishnu. 
and then he tries to pour water and the shukracharya gets inside the kamandalu to block the flow of water and uh, our vamana one knows how to teach a lesson so he plucks a straw from his chatram so he plucks that straw and pokes into the mouth of that water pot that and this goes and hurts the eye of shukracharya so shukracharya is a one eyed rishi one eye gets damaged like this and this ego is get damaged then water starts flowing and the danam happens and then you know vamana starts becoming virata one step covers the earth another step covers the heavens and then asks where do i put the third step bali understands he says there is nothing left everything you have taken only my body is left with me this is all that is left with me place the third step on my head and that is how he places the step and redeems him and sends him to patal loka is the story where he rules now he is a chiranjeevi so bali chakravarti lives in patal loka and rules from there and comes every onam to kerala to remind all the keralites and all people that you one should remain surrendered to the divine all the time and everything belongs to divine in the first place we are just using it we are not owning anything in this world we didn't come with anything did anybody come with anything of their own no either we have borrowed or received as a gift or used what already was uh, exist so there is this idea of i own it doesn't exist in devotion everything is divine everything is god's with this humility and surrender a devotee must live and that is the idea of uh, onam festival and bali chakravarti comes back again and again to remind us and that we should live like this in complete surrender to the divine why draupadi was saved by krishna her surrender she knew there is nothing else she can do and she had always surrendered to krishna for all her life draupadi is one of the foremost devotees of krishna who had always remained surrendered to him and that is how krishna always was there to save them at every step the beauty of surrender is that you become god's responsibility too much we have talked about responsibility but who can really take responsibility of anything you tell me are we even capable of taking responsibility of our own selves we fail in that forget about taking the responsibility of others and responding to their needs this is beyond our capacity it's only god and god alone who can truly take responsibility of everything and everyone cuz he is everywhere he is everything so god alone can take care of us the best way and therefore surrender is important so if you are not surrender what happens even though god is capable of looking after you if you don't allow him to look after you he won't interfere he will withdraw and wait wait till you ask him to come and help he waits he doesn't interfere because he has given us something called free will it means we can decide and do as we please and our mind with our ego is capable of deciding for ourselves so when we develop this ego i am somebody i am something i am i am wealthy i am popular i am uh, whatever knowledgeable i am skilled i am very capable i can decide for myself and i can do for myself the moment we think god stands aside says you do what you want krishna told arjuna etad vimrushya sheshena yatechasi tatha kuru he says i have taught you everything you think about it properly and then do as you please as you feel is right but what did arjuna say immediately he says no no because of your grace finally i have got some buddhi otherwise i was very deluded i thought i am somebody i have come here to take revenge and then i realized that no i am not capable of it i want to beg and eat all kinds of delusions i was suffering with but you gave me the right wisdom that do for doing sake not for your sake my sake or somebody's sake for dharma's sake you do your duty and then now i have learned and now i don't want to make any decision because my mind is incapable of making good decisions so i will leave that power like we give away power of attorney no like that here is my power of attorney to you you do as you want with me karishye vachanam tava he says and then shri krishna says very happy i look after you don't worry even if this war happens you kill your kith and kin what you think is a sin at the end if it's sin or merit don't worry about all of this sarva dharman parityajya forget about all this sense of doing achieving not doing not achieving all this you'll forget just sharanam vraja come to my refuge come to my feet like bali chakravarti came like the fishes came like that just come to my feet sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshishyam mashucha whatever papam is punya also will mokshishyam because punya also can cause a rebirth 
so whatever is your deed and whatever are the repercussions reactions consequences i shall handle it but i am alone capable of that responsibility that is needed to look after a devotee you are not incapable of it so allow me that's what krishna says arjuna says please do as you please and then krishna takes the responsibility whatever happens we know tatra shri vijayo bhuti dhruva niti matir mama all success glory all fame prosperity i call it everything happens where a devotee surrenders to the divine that's the essence of the whole of devotion when arjuna became a surrendered devotee divine took over and took care of them otherwise you think pandavas could have ever won that war of mahabharata impossible that bhishma made a pledge and bhishma pratigna he is known bhishma because he is so fierce he is so intense in whatever he decides he never changes it he will achieve it he decided to finish off the pandavas next day you think anybody could have saved them look at the humility of krishna for a surrendered devotee how many of you will carry each other's chappals you tell me in your <laughs> arms nobody will do that no that dirty you are feeling why should i carry krishna picks up draupadi sandal lest bhishma should hear somebody coming and become alert he takes away the sandals and quietly she goes and falls at the feet so that listening to the all the sounds of bangles and anklets which only the wedded ones women were married were natural response to that is dirga sumangali bhava and then he realizes what he has given but it is krishna's strategy mahabharata war is full of krishna's saving strategies he saves them at every step he, you couldn't kill karna just like that it is krishna's intervention you think you could have defeated krupacharya dronacharya like people no krishna's intervention even duryodhana decides to uh, uh, defeat bhima in a combat in a hand combat in like malayuddha they used to call there also he interferes with the boon of gandhari to duryodhana and does not allow his ties to be uh, fortified and that is how duryodhana gets killed with broken ties what he has not done kill jarasandha this way kill so many of these enemies he it krishna strategy alone helped them win the war but why did krishna come on to the pandavas side because pandavas came to krishna's side vidura says yato dharma tato krishna yata krishno tato jaya where there is dharma krishna will be there where there is krishna jaya means victory will happen there and this is repeated many times even gandhari says it it seems gandhari when she she wants to give a boon when duryodhana asks give us give me the boon to be vijayi she only says this yato dharma tato jaya that's all i cannot say you will be victorious they will be victorious wherever there is dharma dharma will attain victory that's all i can assure you so krishna sides with dharma and dharma is to surrender our greatest dharma as a devotee what is a devotee if you call yourself a devotee the greatest dharma of a devotee is to surrender to the divine will and that is when you become a bali chakravarti an arjuna draupadi the kinds of these devotees that is the essence of all our festivals i was telling the other day india is replete with festivals every other week every other fortnight you have something to celebrate likewise we live from one festival gets over now start preparing for the next festival now we are finishing onam when next we are preparing for dasara dasara gets over there will be people for deepavali deepavali will be kartiki then that gets over margali it goes on and on and on we will never stop but why do we celebrate festivals because there is a reason behind it and the reason is in onam the reason is simply surrender to the divine who are we after all in front of the divine to even say these things belong to us those things belong to you so this is what i wanted to convey about the message of onam and how beautiful our culture is how every single story is so meaningful god does everything why should he take a vamana avatar a short little boy why should he not take on narsimha avatar and tear this bali into pieces like he did for haranika shop he could have done anything but he takes a small little avatar why because he has come to beg so when you are begging you are always smaller than the one who is giving isn't it the giver is bigger than the receiver so he took a form that is that matches the idea with which he has come which is to beg imagine a big tall uh, hefty uh, kingly person coming and begging from bali chakravarti he doesn't even look good bali will think twice why is why is he even begging he is capable of whatever he is 
but this is a vamana this is a short dwarf he is not capable of the same things as big kings so he took a form which will immediately invoke compassion in bali and allow him to offer a danam so this is how god has taken different shapes forms sizes from matsya kurma varaha forget about all those animals vamana if i reduce you to half of your size because you can save the world how many of us are willing to uh, do that boys are always measuring their height every day you know against the wall where in this world you become vamana to save the world you tell me you don't even want to give up your physical appearance but god look at his compassion and humility to save the world becomes a dwarf and then saves the world then and goes on and on like that you see this is the beauty of our culture our spirituality our festivals everything has a significance but don't worry about where this patala loka is and where the heaven is and who is the indra all that is besides the point because there are all details important is essence and essence is devotions culmination is in surrender only anything less than a surrender devotee is not a devotee according to me he is just trying to become a devotee see when do you become a graduate when you pass the exam and get your results till then you are only trying to graduate likewise when you truly become a devotee when you have surrendered to the divine will till then you are only trying to surrender and i see everybody is trying some people try harder some people try lesser but everybody is trying that is a good thing so i was trying to bring that point home that you should remember that devotion ultimately realizes itself or fulfills itself in pure true surrender to the divine where you you don't feel that you are the owner or enjoyer or the doer of anything everything is divine his wish his grace his will this is how a devotee thinks all the time good happens oh it's his abundant grace on me he has given me more than my deservedness we feel very happy if something not good in the sense it's not as favorable you say no he has definitely done what was right for me it's um, for me to understand how this is going to help me grow further we will never see negativity that is why indian children are much more resilient than most of the children in the world i've seen who do not go to any of these religious places or do not listen to religious discourses do not believe in the existence of a higher power they are anchorless they are uprooted from their core which is deep divine spiritual core they were uprooted so they are floating is like the kite whose uh, string is snapped they just flying floating around without aim and that is why little disturbance happens in their life immediately they are plunged into depression and they start taking medication and all that. the moment a little nice thing happens they become so egoistic and arrogant that they don't even treat others with uh, respect both ways they swing but a devotee never does that he becomes a sthita pragnya he becomes equanimous because he always is acutely aware is extremely clear whatever i am is because of the divine good happens is because of him not so good happens is also his mercy in some way could have been worser see devotion helps you to develop this positive thinking that's why you don't need this psychiatric help if you are a good devotee surrendered devotee in every situation you will find a positive reason you will never complain also to god you will never complain to anybody you will never get into negativity because all the time you will think there is a reason why god is doing this for me i am sure i have to learn something out of it and from there i'll become a better devotee that is why he is doing for me so like this a devotee's attitude is always positive bali chakravarti went and the patala he didn't complain can you upgrade me to sutala atala or somewhere vitala why patala he said wherever you send me your wish he went to patala he is happy over there and comes back again and again in fact i was reading somewhere in the from purana or something vamana purana or somewhere it mentions that um, ravana asura later went and met bali chakravarti in patal loka when war of ramayana was to happen and he was trying to get as many demons on his side and powerful ones as possible so there is a story that he goes to patal loka and meets uh, bali chakravarti and says you see you are demon i am demon we are brothers this vishnu is our common enemy he pushed you into patala now he is pushing me out of lanka let us fight him together and he says so bali chakravarti laughs in his heart of hearts because he knows what he is talking is absolute nonsense but he says do one thing there is something lying over there can you just pick it up for me and bring it here so ravana goes there and there are two earrings you know gold earrings which are lying over there it seems very bright and effulgent 
the moment ravana approaches it he faints with the power that earrings had the energy and the vibrations and he faints and falls and then bali chakravarti tells do you know what are those those were earrings of my great grandfather hiranyakashipu whom that vishnu as narasimha avatar tore into pieces you can't even lift his earrings you don't even have that strength and you are talking about killing mahavishnu get back to your senses this is what he tells ravana it seems so the happiness of a devotee is in every situation i am happy मीरा बाई से कोई दिन हाथी तो कोई दिन घोड़ा कोई दिन पैदल चलना चाहिए कोई दिन लाडू तो कोई दिन पेड़ा कोई दिन फाकम फाका जी मीन्स हम डे यू मे राइड अ हॉर्स हम डे यू मे राइड एन एलिफेंट सम डे यू लव टू वॉक अ बेर फुट सम डे यू लीड लड्डू सम डे यू लीड पेड़ा मीन्स नाइस स्वीट्स द अदर डे यू माइट हैव टू स्टाफ करना फकीरी तो क्या दिल गिरी सदा मगन में रहना जी शी सेस वेन यू हैव बिकम अ बेगर ऑफ गॉड in the sense you are dependent only on god surrendered to god where is the question of you demanding this and wanting this or asking this whatever he gives it's a good thing bhagwan said to me he tell if you are my devotee learn to be happy in whatever condition i keep you this is one sentence he spoke it hit me like tons of bricks ye paristhitilo unchina santoshanga undadam nerchuko is whatever be the situation i put you in learn to remain contented and happy don't complain that was a lesson so a devotee cannot afford to complain to the divine whatever be the situation that is the kind of devotion bali chakravarti and the likes have demonstrated and we must always remind ourselves of that goal of devotion which is to absolutely surrender to be very frank i have such good devotees i don't hesitate before telling them do this or don't do this you know they want to do something i call them and say don't do this they'll just drop it like hot potatoes they will not do it even if they desperately want to do it because they have that surrender and when they don't want to do it i'll tell them you go and do this that also they are willing to do it though they don't want to do it because they have surrendered at the end they realize it's for their good but i also have plenty of them if i tell them don't do it they will exactly do it and if i tell them do it they will just not do it and i have to think 10 times before sending them a message or talking to them should i even mention this to them it's a waste of my time i think i can mention like a good advice i advise that i can tell but they won't follow i know finally they'll go and do something and get into trouble again they'll come back to seek uh, <clears throat> then they'll say i have surrendered to you i have surrendered to you that is because they can't do anything about all the mess so let us not be devotees like that you know devotee should be such god should feel comfortable vamana should be able to come to bali and say give and bali should say even if you take everything i'm happy because anyway it's all yours i have no fear what will happen to my future who will look after me how will i survive what will happen to me nothing you decide as you decide you do that freedom god should enjoy with a devotee right that he knows that devotee is mine and i am devotee so therefore there is no hesitation there is no kind of in a way uncomfortable relation there is always this spontaneity there is always this kind of, you know kind of um, natural love and friendship that kind of devotee one should become and i enjoy the company of such devotees i can sit for hours with them do nothing and it really relaxes me the best way for me to unwind is to be with devotees like this who are a joy to be with one of them wrote to me you know he was trying to send something to me a donation of course he was sending donation and then after that he said by to monday morning i will do this for you and uh, he closed the email and then he sent another email i thought oh if there is a problem then he wrote but i i could not finish the email so therefore the second part of the mail i thought what is that he didn't finish and what is written we always belong to you and we are only yours or something like that that was the second part of the email which he missed writing it <laughs> for which sake he wrote another email to me there are people like that also he said how could i not convey that we always are yours and we are here only for you that kind of devotion you know it makes me so happy that is why krishna always enjoyed the company of these gopikas gopalas pure devotion unfortunately he had one mission for which sake he had to go to mathura and do what he wanted but he was never happy again in his life not with his wives not with all the cousins and all his children and grandchildren maybe in arjuna's presence he was little happy because there was one person who was very close and kind still look at arjuna the trouble arjuna gave during the bhagavad gita if that was the best bet he had best person you could imagine krishna's plight that's why he always craved to go back to vrindavan to be with his friends become a devotee like that so that the 
God comes running to you. You don't have to search for God. He comes searching for you. Where is that fellow? Where is that devotee? I want to spend time. I want to be with them. Because I enjoy their company. That kind of devotion is truly the highest devotion and that comes only with Atma Nivedanam. That is the devotion of surrender. May you all develop that kind of devotion. That is the idea. The Onam comes to uh, us every year. It reminds us of these beautiful things. And let us always be reminded of our great good fortune of being born or being at least associated with a country like this and its culture. Where every now and then we are reminded of our true purpose, which is to realize divinity through service and sacrifice and to realize that devotion finds its fulfillment only in complete surrender to the divine, not partial surrender. Everything is yours. You are everything. I am yours, you are mine, and there is nothing else that exists other than you and you for me. That kind of a devotion alone can take us to that highest realization. With these words of blessings, I conclude.